It's the day of the coronation. I am in the colours of the British flag and everyone is in full preparations for this evening. We're going to have a big party tonight and Maria is cooking a special coronation meal. She's been researching it for ages and we're not allowed to know what it is. We've got a house full of lovely B&B guests that are all going to be celebrating with us. But before then, there's the coronation itself. We've set up a TV in the winter salon for everyone and I am in charge of making the official coronation quiche. Now, I'm sure most of you will already have heard about this quiche. Charles and Camilla have chosen a spinach, tarragon and broad bean quiche as their official coronation meal. So I figured we've got to join in with that. We will be having the same quiche. I may have overdone it on the tarragon, come to think of it there. And I was wondering what to serve with it and they were suggesting some boiled potatoes and a salad and I thought well obviously they're just going for like lots of garden produce and this idea of very fresh food. So I thought well here we're lucky because there's loads of artichokes in season in the area. So I have asparagus for a salad, artichokes we will just eat them boiled like this. I've set up obviously the Emma Bridgewater coronation plate is on the table just so I can stay focused during the day. And now I just have to shell a lot of broad beans. You're ready for the coronation, but to be fair, you're ready every day. Well, I'm not ready for the coronation yet, but I will be ready for the coronation. Queens are born in May. <laughs> it was a gift from a dear friend. I love the tiara. <laughs> Thank you. And the nighttime tiara comes out. Are you ready for the uh, I've still got to make the quiche. That's my oh, that's one right. task today is the well, quiche. Well, you're going to look lovely making quiche. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. My quiche making outfit. <laughs> Your quiche making outfit. <laughs> All right. I hope you find treasures. I hope I find a gown. Maybe I'll even find like a little wrap. Right, good luck. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, darling. Good luck. Did you see this, by the way? Yes. John and Mike got it for this evening. That's so good. Okay, we're going to have that up in the dining room as well. Over the fire. Over the fire, definitely. Uh, good luck finding treats for tonight well i saw some things last uh, last week that i didn't buy which were actually quite useful they're little ice cream uh coops oh okay so you're going so back for those i checked with maria and she, now she we've discovered it. that my cake tin that i bought at the book last week is in fact an ice cream mold or chocolate, or chocolate mold mm -hmm. so i might get those there were like nine of them and we've got 12 i think so, but there's never quite never enough, enough. So yeah it's... okay yeah. but good luck i'll miss you bye set up the coronation on my other phone whilst I'm cooking. That is some carriage and I do like all of the blue bits on the horses. There they go. Whilst I'm about to shell all of these, I thought I didn't like beans and that's because my mother always just cooked them like this. But without the outer casing, I do actually like them. That took an hour, an hour. At this rate, the coronation will be finished before I've even started the quiche. Now I know I don't do broad beans more often. You know half the musicians in the Abbey today. Yeah. You should be joining in with them in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and you're excited because this is the music you were waiting yes. for for the coronation. Yes, that's Zadok the a... priest. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's a very uh, bad moment on very tiny screens. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Everyone is clustering around looking at this. Even though the TV is set up in the other room, but turns out coronation quiche takes quite a long time to make. Yeah. I'll be honest, the coronation quiche looks mostly like raw ingredients in a minute. <laughs> How long have you been up? Well, I've been distracted by the actual coronation. <laughs> The coronation piece is supposed to be served at the lunch, which happens after the coronation. Right. So, we're fine. We're good. Do we have bunting? We have a flag. I'll oh, come and see the flag, Kat. Right, right, right. No, you've got to come and see this flag. I don't, wait, you watch the coronation. I'll bring the flag. Right, in we go with the flag. It's going to be quite hard to be holding the phone at the same time, but I think I can do it. There we go. Welcome to Lalam's coronation celebrations. No. There is also coronation shortbread that was brought as a gift and I would like to draw your attention to the patterns on it. Yes, we have the Tower of London, an orb, a flag and a crown. Well, you obviously have to get the castle bit. Castle, okay, I'll have the castle. What would you the like? Bit? Is that the I mean, the, the choice is obvious. The crown goes without saying. Goes without saying. Um... I, I guess I'll go for whatever this An one is. An orb. Yes. Wise decision. Mm. 
bowl and crack your tea first. And then I'll have my shortbread with my tea. Can you make me a cup too? Yeah, of course. Just to catch you up on what's happened, Kat has arrived. I always were, yeah. There is still no quiche. No quiche. Okay. And he's still not crowned. Yeah. He's still not crowned. Good. But what did you find? Oh. But you uh, can't eat quiche anyway. No. <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, Maria said she needed some more ice cream coops, so. Nice. So there's those and also these. Because the kitchen needs more copper. Oh, you didn't. Yes, I did. The kitchen did not need those. That's cool. And Look at you looking around great. the room, just wanting someone oh, to agree with you. Thank you. And then match your hair. Wow, well, <laughs> so much. What? That is exactly what I was going for, so that makes me very happy. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, that's it. Oh, you were very restrained, darling. Yeah. Did the others have fun? Yes. I feel quite lucky because I managed to get proper cheddar here as well, which is great. So it's a proper English quiche. Uh, I didn't make the pastry. It was supposed to be handmade with lard, but we were all out of lard and very rich in ready-made all butter pastry. So that's what went in instead. I've got the creamy tarragony goodness. They're supposed to be deeper pies, but I didn't have any deep quiche tins. So this is what we're having. And I put the artichokes in as well. We can have those with it. I've decided not to do the asparagus after all because although I'm not allowed to know what is for dinner, Maria came in and said, no, no, we're having asparagus tonight. So the asparagus is being held for another day. There we go. 20 minutes to quiche. They're still processing back to Buckingham Palace, so we should be having it at about the same time as them. I think we're okay. Do you think this is what the kitchen in Buckingham Palace looks like? Yeah, do you think that they're all going crazy? Or do you think perhaps in Buckingham Palace they made the quiche the night before? Ooh, and just in the fridge, warm up a little. We do insist on an extremely fresh quiche. <laughs> <laughs> As I finish the quiche, yeah. you start for tonight. We are starting by getting my almonds drunk. How do you get your almonds drunk? You get some sweet wine. Yeah and you uh, soak the almonds in the sweet wine. And they're going to absorb the wine, get tipsy, and most crucially then, be blitzed up and become almond milk. Milk? Well, this is a, this, this what, is a what spelling. What's milk? So the spelling is M-Y-L-K, but um, this is for medieval almond milk, which is done not with water, but with sweet wine. Amazing, and why are you doing medieval because, almond milk? So I know Isabel was uh, asking you to for, for me to make coronation chicken yes she thought that wow it's coronation yeah. let's have coronation chicken yeah so i did some research and a i wasn't very impressed with the uh, coronation chicken itself How can you say that but then also i thought okay this was only made once at the big lunch after the queen's coronation mm. and it was only served to the foreign guests because it was deemed too exotic and too spicy that is so embarrassing about the British palate in yeah. the fifties. But then you read the recipes, uh, recipe, and it's got like red wine, shallots, or onions, fine, and then like a tiny little bit of curry powder, like, and then whipped cream and mayonnaise. It's not my jam. It's not really my. That food. just sounds pretty good to me, but yeah. I've had it before. That, that's everyone in England before, knows it. And everyone's yes. going to be making it. Yes. However, it's traditional, but it's only actually been made once for the coronation, and hardly anyone mm. really ate it. I'm making something more traditional. Ooh. It's been served at coronations in England, or in, in, in the Great Britain, since 1050 something, 1056? No. And up until the coronation banquet of George IV, who had this elaborate, extravagant, over-the-top banquet that cost about 20 million pounds in current uh, money. No. Uh, and after which they decided to sort of scale everything down by a lot. So this dish had been at all of those? Yeah, this dish called Dilligrout. Dilligrout. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've or, never or heard of Dilligrout. Dil -grout or Le Messe de Giron, which is what I'm going with. Le Messe de Giron. We are in France. Yeah. So it was made by a Norman cook. So it's French, William, technically. For William the Conqueror's wife's coronation. So for the coronation of the Queen Consort, which is also quite symbolic mm. for today. Uh, and they liked it so much that they gave the cook, the, the Norman chef, a sergeantry. And they gave him a manor, the manor of Addington. And that's why you chose this yeah. dish. Yeah. All so, the, I guess, his descendants or whoever inherited the manor of Addington had to make this dish for the coronation. It was, com it was a compulsory element. I love this. This is so much better than coronation chicken. So, yeah. And it's still chicken. It's a chicken stew slash pottage. And so there's varying kind of sources as to what actually it is. But it's some sort of almond milk. I'm not going to do a stew. I'm going to 
do the base of this as a sauce and then poached chicken to go with it. So to make this kind of so we're going to be having a taste of history. You're going to have a taste of history. I think it's a lot more traditional. It's a lot more exciting. I love it. I and love it. Yeah, uh, it's true that as tastes changed, because this is very kind of medieval mm. in the sense that there's sweet wine, nuts, uh, we'll have pine nuts as well. You want me over with the sweet wine. And also sugar and different like uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, mace, that kind of, those kind of spices that were popular at the time. And there were symbols of wealth, spice and mm. uh, sugar with meat was like the symbol of uh, yeah. wealth and status. We might as well try it out. So I'll adapt it. I'll see how it, how it Yeah, goes. I've fantastic. Also, clearly I've not made this before. I thought it would be fun. Well, there hasn't been a coronation in our lifetime. Yeah, there we go. So this was the first opportunity to do it. And yeah. you've not passed that opportunity no, no, by. No, no, no. Well, um, Philip will have to be having coronation turkey since he cannot have nuts the, the or almonds chicken, or the chicken. Or the pine nuts, frankly. <laughs> but uh, we shall. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah. Drink it. This is where it starts. Yeah. Drink. I think we're the sensible ones. We're in the sunshine. Yeah. Everyone else wants to be inside in front of the TV. Uh, the coronation is over, though everyone's just appeared on the balcony, so that might be why everyone's still mm. watching. I think this is nice. I'm quite enjoying this. It's lovely. We've got artichokes with melted butter, mm. our coronation quiche. What's it like? Have you tried it yet? No, I I've been eating the artichokes and melted butter. That quiche is absolutely delicious. I didn't think I was a broad bean fan, though honestly the best thing about it is the tarragon and the cheddar. We've finished our little coronation lunch in the sunshine, but I have to say, note to self, keep the apron on when eating artichokes in melted butter. I got the melted butter everywhere and I've had to wash my dress whilst it's still on me. So what is the plan? I can see that you're getting ready. The cutlery is coming out. So, a conundrum. Oh, there's a conundrum. Conundrum, yes. Good work, conundrum. <laughs> um, it is, I'm trying to decide between this and that. Now, this looks more finished. Yes. I prefer this colour scheme. Of just more the gold. gentle, yeah, without the pink. So I feel like that's more finished. Yeah, and it's maybe more um Regal. Regal, exactly. I, I really like that together just It's plain. much fresher, just on its own. Exactly. But so. I think we go regal tonight. Yeah. Because it's I mean it's the coronation. You go all out. All out. I want to use uh, napkins that we have that are white with uh gold thread and silver thread. And then the, the golden cutlery. And what I'm trying to do is make it very regal, right? So maybe we should go for the red and using the fleur de lis, which is obviously famous for the French royal family. Royal family, family yes. But regardless, as this is spode, I feel like. Are we bringing in the Brits? It, exactly. It's like regal and English. So. I thought you were making a cake with cat. Ah, yes. I have left cat to her own devices. Where is she? I'm going to go find cat. Uh, she's in the gardens. Right, I'll go find cat. <laughs> You can tell that cat is in the chateau. A cat amongst the wisteria. You're looking very picturesque. <laughs> Am I? How's the secret cake for Maria's birthday going? Um, okay. What I really should have done was get old Major Ken out the cupboard. Oh, I love Major Ken love as well. Major Ken. I should have got him out the cupboard instead. But it'll still be fine. I don't think you realise quite how pretty you're looking right now, surrounded by the wisteria. Is it me or is it the wisteria's looking pretty and I happen to be in the photo? No, it's you're making the wisteria look good. <laughs> All right, what's in the mystery cake? It's now looking thoroughly mixed. Uh, oh, and um, the measuring cup in it. It's, um... Well, it's all right. Like a bakewell tart in a cake. It's been a good day for food so far. It has. You can see that I've been enjoying tasting it, given that it's down my top. That is really good. Yes. We need to get changed. We do. But as soon as that cake's in, we'll go get changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is double the quantity of the cake. Look, it's about a millimetre of cake. You're missing an eight-inch pan, Stephanie. Yeah, but I tried really hard. I had the measuring tape, and I was going through them all, and I was annoying Maria by being completely in the way, taking all the different cake fans out, and this is the only one that had a bottom and a top. Did you just stamp your foot? <laughs> I saw a stamp that is spring form and has a bottom and a top, and then I had to double the quantities, but. I just, we're hoping it's going to be okay. It's going to be great. There's so much baking soda in there, it has to rise. Look, we can invent a new yes. recipe tomorrow. My hands look horrible. Yeah. Lady Macbeth. That damned fruit. Look, it's, it's going to be great. I And if it's not, your eternal we live near the boulangerie. I know you say that we can't, but 
it, we're gonna sort something out. Yeah, we have enough ingredients that should this go tits up or fruit bottom, then we've got enough ingredients to redo. Popping it in. Yeah. And then leaving it. Keep our fingers crossed, and if not, another cake tomorrow morning. That is that. Buck that up, is plan. Likely. It smells so good in here. It's so good. Like, why are people not making this all the time? Also, Charlotte, if you're watching, I finally found the use for the rose water that you brought. Well, that was from Charlotte. That's from Charlotte. Um, yeah, because the other thing I forgot to mention is that, yeah, mm -hmm. usually the symbols of status and wealth were uh, spices, sugar, nuts, and rose water. So, in fact, they just took essences. all the expensive things yeah. and put it all into one dish. Okay, granted, I am strayed from the recipe and I have not used castrated cockerels. Oh, uh, yeah. I thought, which is still huge in France. Oh yeah, you can That's buy it. In traditional our, in for local, Christmas. Um, I can't bring market. myself to buy them. No, and there's and there's no real need. But so I've been um, stewing because usually it's a stew, and you would like shred after you stew the yes. meat, you shred it. But yes, I feel like it's not very presentable now. So this will be for us covered in the sauce, mm -hmm. and then I'll poach the chicken separately, and I'm going to reduce this to like a nice sauce for you guys and. Um, over. Really excited. But, but it's it's released all the flavors and it's so good. Like it's <laughs> strangely like marzipani, but in but not in a weird way. Maybe because I'm used to like sweet and um, cinnamony. I have to say marzipan with meat. chicken sounds super weird, but I'm looking it's forward weird. to trying it. Yeah, and Natty said that there's a Thai dish as well with like a sweet coconut chicken mm. kind of vibe and ginger. This has fresh ginger and. Um, Dry Do you want to taste the sauce? I love to okay, taste it, really yes. Good. I'm tasting death to Philip sauce. Wonderful. <laughs> death to Philip sauce. I can taste it once. <laughs> but it's so good. It's so good. Why are we not making this? Why are we not making this all the time? I'm so sorry for No wonder, no wonder the cook got a manor. <coughs> he deserved nothing less than it's a castle. It's so good already. <laughs> so, and imagine, so the original, like I said, would be like a soup or a stew and you would have all the uh, meat that you'd have, the white meat and the brown meat cut up or like shredded. So it would be this kind of thick mm. stew, but it's so good. Also, by the way, if you don't want to eat marzipani chicken, for, for you'd be wrong, but if you don't <laughs> want to, I still really recommend making almond milk the medieval way, because when we blended the um, nuts with the spice... Uh, with the Did they get wine, super drunk? Did they properly oh, yeah, drink yeah, it all? The, the uh, almonds were more than tipsy, but the resulting aroma and like flavor was amazing, just as like almond milk itself. Can you imagine like in like cocktails? Oh, I didn't strain that it would for work. Because I want the mm. slight kind of texture of the nuts. But if you were to strain it, that would be an amazing mm. thing for like. Oh, so many ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm loving today. We need to bring medieval cuisine back. This is it. I'm start starting a trend. This is a big moment. I brought this new machine for Philip to use on the tabletop. And I'll use it on my clothes as well. But. Really, so that we can just do the tablecloths in place. That's doing a wonderful job. It's good, isn't it? It's really, really good. Okay, money well spent. That does look a lot better. It does. Still needs a bit of smoothing out, but a hundred times better than it was. Okay. Oh my God, it's you so good on you. Is it fitting? Yeah. One for the doctor too. Oh my God. Uh, there you go. Oh, oh, oh excellent. Oh, nice. Very, very good. Grandpa, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> she needs a picture taken. You look as though you were born with that tiara on. That's right. That does. It right. does. It looks right too. <laughs> You're not wearing a tiara. I'm not wearing a tiara. I might not be wearing much. The food will speak for me. I mean, I will be wearing clothes. Oh, I'm gonna say, well, what I'm, is happening to I haven't heard I'm so confused. <laughs> okay, look, the weather is warm. I've been staring this Savayon for this, some time. Oh, this is Savayon, this is not the Dilligrat. No, the this, is, to one this side. is a sauce for Ooh. the asparagus. Look with how good um, that looks. And I thought I'd make it a bit more British with some uh, orange, bitter orange marmalade. Mmm. But uh, obviously the main sort of costume feature is Philip. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we'll be playing with that yeah. for the entrance. Oh, you're going to come in with him? Oh, yeah. Well, have so people good. seen you? Uh, people have seen me. I've been outside with everybody, yes. Well, but people in the, in the other side of the camera have seen you because you look amazing. This is my That's the perfect outfit for coronation. Very royal. Yeah. I've even got little streamers and slightly medieval. And beautiful shoes. Yeah, a little bit medieval. Very, very <laughs> For the demigrams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hello, Prince Philip. <laughs> And even the corgi. Well, this uh, is a gift. So I know. It's fitting. It is. Are you going to hold it all night? Probably not, because we'll probably be carrying plates. Can we have a little turn? That's 
my belt. Yes, you I shouldn't have, be no, able to wear I my have, belt. Have on the looser setting. Yes. And I had to like, like, like breathe, in, uh, breathe out <laughs> so it should fit it. Because I can't find my own black belt. So just, yeah. That is so cool. This is from the 50s. This is vintage from the Queen's Guard. That, yeah, and when you bought it, and I find myself having this conversation with you a lot. I said, you will never wear that. Do not buy that. Do I not have the perfect occasion to wear it? You do. The coronation. My very own Queen's Guard. Let's go with that. Sure. <laughs> I've got to take this off as soon as we sit down because I think I bruised the rest when we tried to get it off. I haven't even noticed the boots. Oh, yes. These are my MOUs purchased from two yep. years ago. Yep. Charity shop. I feel like I shouldn't be wearing dog trousers, but yeah. Who's counting? I feel you're missing a horse. I'm allergic to horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wine I'm just opening now, just we're going to start with champagne. If you could bring some champagne flutes, we'll mm. have that with the starter. Yeah, about that. Um, we need to invest in some nice champagne. Oh, nice use of invest. The nice ones are all in the guest rooms. Oh, yeah. right, never mind. We'll just put out what we've got. Yeah. We've had to use the kitchen champagne flutes with the blue stems. And they don't really go at all, but our story is that we're using the colours of the Union Jack. It's our story and we're going to stick to it. There we go. We have brilliantly tied in the blue of the champagne flutes. Everyone's sitting at the table. We're about to start eating. I'm just going to show this to everyone first. We only have one of these plates and it is broken, which is actually how I could afford it. But this is a plate made by Bernardo in Limoges that was made for the visit of Queen Elizabeth II when she came to France in 1957. So it's with these plates that the French put on their grand reception for Queen Elizabeth. And I thought everyone would like to see it tonight. It's asparagus with a orange uh, mousseline sauce and flowers from the garden. Mm. And orange. with that, a bitter uh, orange marmalade. <laughs> it's based on one of the dishes from Queen Elizabeth II's coronation. And it's a little homage to that by Maria. Perfect. You love people filming you eat. <laughs> well, I just wanted to make a simple toast to meeting absolutely wonderful people, gorgeous angels. Yeah. No, really, thank you for that, seriously. And to Stephanie and Phyllis for opening up Chateau de la Land for us all to come together. So here's to everyone. Let's yes. keep the magic going. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 hip long hip. live the king? Or? Long live the king. 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 Something is happening. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> the royal Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's the official coronation dessert. It's so pretty. It's as strawberry as... and ginger trifle. Ooh, ginger. Oh, oh so this is this year's official coronation dessert. I think so. Yeah. Nice. Wow. I just got Ooh. my information from Maria. So, so we had a quiche earlier, and now we're having the dessert. There you go. Hey, hey, hooray! Yeah. Yeah. So, that was like the way out of China. Oh. And to finish, we have Fortnum and Mason's rose and violet cream truffles in celebration of the coronation of Her Majesty the Queen Consort. And Maria's taken them out and served them on these little platters. They look so good, Thank but you. not as good as the gentleman holding them. <laughs> Sharon is getting more and more glamorous every time yeah. I look at you. <laughs> well, good night, everybody. Yeah, Have a lovely nice. evening. Yeah, nice. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's been a wonderful so day. Thank you all. <laughs> it's been the perfect day, but the fun doesn't stop because tomorrow morning when we wake up, it will be Maria's birthday. So, oh, oh, <laughs> looks as though there's plans and everything first thing Attempt in the morning. Attempt number two, we've learned from a lot of our mistakes. <laughs> the first being, don't make cakes in a blender. Ah. Turns out blades don't beat your sugar and butter together in the way that you might think they would. Ten. Mistake number two, was not finding the right size tin. Where is it's, it, temp number one? Oh! It is a temp number one. Well, hang on, that looks like a claffle tin. It looks okay. Oh, claffle tin. Yeah, just call it claffle tin. Um, it's it. definitely, I'd oh, say, nice. more of a cakey biscuit. Okay, uh, that sounds but good. dense. Dense cakey biscuit. Maybe warmed with a tea, it might be okay. But nonetheless, it is not the cake that Maria, Queen of the Kitchen, deserves. 
<laughs> so we're going for attempt number two. And this time I've got scales. I've got Major Ken, and I'm following a recipe. <laughs> Good morning, Natty. How are you? I'm very, very good. Very good. Very and how are all the guests? They're, they're sad because they're leaving. I know, it is really, I don't like John it. and Mike are very sad and midget. They've been so lovely. It's been a great weekend. They said that they have a wonderful night last night. I'm very sad that you're going today because it's been incredible having you here. Thank you. But, I feel like we were just getting yeah. settled in, but... Yeah, yeah, they've been darling. But can I just show everyone your wellies yes. because... Are these not the <laughs> finest wellies in the whole world? <laughs> wow, that's elevated the countryside right there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you look amazing as always. Thank you so much. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Maria. Maria. Happy oh, birthday God. to you. Thank you. It's your birthday. We're going to party. It's your birthday. We're going to party. Give you that rendition. Dinner was delicious, both nights. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. You get a sin. We were all in. Oh. Nina. Are you saying I get you in digestion? No. I said that. No, I said that. You made our tummies really full in the It's so good. It's so good. Bravo. I'm glad it's that. Thank you. I've just run upstairs to get changed, and I can hear a lot of excitement in the courtyard. And the sound of a whip. Ooh. I feel like I can hear something unusual happening outside the window. <laughs> okay, this is a great sight. Oh, I have to have halloumi on my birthday. Birthday halloumi. I'm glad that we apparently all have to have halloumi yeah, on yeah, your birthday. Yeah, this good. is excellent. We've got, well, we've got different pants and different levels of uh, grilling. But okay. This is the goat cheese one and this is the traditional one. But she's cheap. Which is your favourite? I like both of them. This yeah. is something softer, but this has like that flavour. Oh yeah, a bit of kick. Who chose the napkins? Amory. Perfect, Amory. So this is apparently the oldest champagne house in France? Yep. And that's your favourite champagne? Yep. There's always something historical with you. It's never just the thing. There's always an intellectual background reason, and I love that. Yeah. My dad introduced me to this one. It's mm. very, very nice. Yep. I guessed it was all happening in here when you disappeared. Oh, yes. Oh, I like this the gnome. This is excellent. I don't think this one's going to light. Oh, oh. oh no. What's a daisy? Are we supposed to take off some? What has happened? There's a safety feature oh. on it. Sugar pups. Yeah. Nice. Very nice idea. Good. Safety first. Right. Okay. Take two. Need that really was childproof. Three of us couldn't Idiot work it proof. out. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Maria. <laughs> this has got fluffiness in it. Uh, this is going quite well, I think. But I'm still wanting to try the biscuit. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's very representative. Like if I were to make a cake, this would it. <laughs> Cheers. Happy birthday. Thank you all for joining us for our coronation celebrations and, of course, for Maria's birthday. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons, especially Yadel and Ether, Sultana Al Faisal, Alice Allen, Stephen Arnold, Bill Ballard, and Karen Valiot. Thank you so much for supporting the Chateau Diaries. I hope that everyone watching had a wonderful weekend, and I can't wait to see you all again on Thursday.